think it might be time for a book haul. <laughs> Obviously that is what I'm here today to do. The title of this video is uh, already self-explanatory so you know what to expect and I have a bunch of books to go through from publishers that I found second hand and a few that I bought new as well as some that friends passed on to me. So without further ado let's just crack on to all the books that have made their way onto my shelves of late. Okay so I think I will start with the books that friends passed on to me because there are three of those so I was very very fortunate in that friends were clearing out books and thought I might be interested in some of them which I was so I ended up with three new ones on my shelves two of which were from my lovely friend Leanne and one of which was from my lovely friend Jen who I will both link in the description box down below. The book that Jen sent me is one that she actually managed to ha end up with two copies of because it's a Nicky French novel, a Nicky French mystery thriller and Jen is such a big Nicky French fan she has been uh, raving about Nicky French for years now and I finally read my first Nikki French was it earlier this year or was it last year? It's all blended into one at this point, but I did really, really enjoy it. So naturally when Jen said she'd accidentally end up two copies of one of them and would I like it, I said yes. This is Complicit and it's all about Bonnie Graham who is in her friend's flat. She's alone except for the dead body lying in a pool of blood. What happened? What will she do? And is any or all of it her fault? I'm not gonna read any more because that is such an intriguing premise in itself. I know Nikki French have a whole series which Jen absolutely adores that is um, about one specific investigator who I believe is a psychologist that assists with the police but the novel I read by them is a standalone and this one is also a standalone. So this will hopefully get me deeper into Nikki French and at some point I will start the uh, series which I mentioned. I then have two novels that like I said Leanne passed on to me, the first one of which is a thriller. This is a YA thriller called Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haas. This is one that was actually on my wish list because as you probably know I am a sucker for a YA thriller. And this is about a group I believe of three friends who are on a summer holiday in Aruba when one of them dies and another one of them is arrested for the murder. So she is stuck in jail in a foreign country that she's not familiar with trying to prove her innocence and that sounds so interesting. I haven't read a thriller quite with that sort of premise before and you do read a lot of thrillers that have overlap so I'm hoping I'm going to love this one. And then we have Magic Bites by Ilona Andrews which is the first in the Kate Daniels series. This is an urban fantasy series I've been hearing things about for a long long time. Great great things. People love Ilona Andrews. She specifically writes romantic urban fantasy that is perhaps on the darker side and I've been meaning to read her so of course I took the opportunity to grab this one off Leanne. Kate is a mercenary who specifically deals with the more magical side of things in her world but she is dragged into something a lot more personal when her guardian is murdered. I think next for a little change because this isn't usually the order I do things in I'll show you the books that were sent to me by publishers before moving on to the books I picked up for myself. So first up on this pile is just a little one but it's a lovely little one and that is My Heart's in the Highlands Classic Scottish Poems selected by Gabby Morgan. So this is a Macmillan Collector's Library Edition which are published by Pan Macmillan. So this is a really beautiful little series that typically publishes classics and out of print or out of copyright works, a lot of novels but sometimes works like this which are edited volumes by individuals that bring together lots of of different works so perhaps an anthology of different writers or just a selection from one specific short story writer or poet and this is obviously as the title suggests classic Scottish poems so of course there's going to be Burns in here but there are others because we have other poets not to say that Burns isn't fabulous we also have poems by anonymous writers we have them by Robert Louis Stevenson, Sir Walter Scott, Carolina Oliphant, Jean Elliott and many many more. I'm super excited to dive into this because although I've read Burns and a few other Scottish poets I definitely haven't read a lot of these classics. We then have a proof of a book I am so excited about and that is The Trial by Laura Bates. Sorry you can't see the title here, actually you can see it on the back. <laughs> That's the title. So Laura Bates is one of my all-time favourite non-fiction writers of all time. She's absolutely incredible. She's written some of the most life-changing books for me um, and this is her second novel I believe and it's about a group of seven teens whose plane crashes and they are washed up on a desert island and have to survive. So I don't know if there's going to be Lord of the Flies allusions in here but what I can be sure of is it's going to be incredibly insightful and feminist and powerful. We then have the latest romance novel by Helen Huang which is The Heart Principle. Helen Huang writes contemporary romance novels of which I've read 
one and absolutely adored. That was a Kiss Quotient. It has had quite the hype and rightly so. So obviously I'm super excited for her new novel. And I feel very lucky that Corvus offered to send me a copy. This one is about violinist Anna Sun who accidentally achieves career success with a viral YouTube video. But from the sounds of it more than anything, it sounds like a ton of pressure that she then feels like she has to live up to, not helped when her boyfriend of five years breaks up with her. So Anna's life has been turned upside down and she decides to do something she's never done before which is go out there and experience all the world has to offer in terms of uh, love, romance and one night stands until one man in particular may change her path. Aside from the fun romantic elements though I think this book also deals with terminal illness and grief and loss of family members so I'm sure it is a combination of the fun and the frivolous and the heartwarming as well as the deep and the touching and more serious. We then have a book I was not expecting to turn up in the post but it did and I was super excited for it because I hadn't heard of it. This was sent to me by Canongate. It's a proof of Lear Wife by J.R. Thorpe which is a feminist retelling of King Lear by Shakespeare. I mean, I love me any sort of feminist retelling or female focused, female voiced retelling of a classic. So of course I was super excited to see this one on my, so of course I was super excited to see this one turn up in my post magically by surprise. What a treat. It comes out on the 4th of November, so not actually terribly long now, at least this year, which can't be said for all of the books in this haul. In fact, my next one I am super excited about, but I have to warn you, does not come out until January of next year. And that is Pandora uh, by Susan Stokes Chapman. So this is an early proof copy and a hardback proof at that, which feels very luxurious. And this one is inspired by the Greek myth of Pandora. It's set in Georgian London when a young woman accidentally opens a vase that, or breaks open a vase maybe, that contains within it dangers that she never expected. A little bit or even a lot like the ancient Greek myth of Pandora, which is one that I've never seen retold and I love the idea of it being retold in a completely different historical era. This sounds absolutely up my street. I mean I already love historical fiction set in this period so the fact that it combines that with Greek myth I cannot wait. Then on the topic of antiquity I actually have a non-fiction book which was very very kindly sent to me by Oxford University Press which is the latest work from Daniel Ogden, a scholar I greatly admire and who, I, and who I've read in the past and really learn a lot from but this one I'm so excited for not just because I'm an ancient historian but because of the specific topic it deals with and that is dragons. This is the dragon in the west. This is a history of the mythology and lore behind dragons in the western world and in western folklore which I cannot wait to dig my teeth into. And then lastly for books sent to me by the publishers we have the very highly anticipated She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This is a novel that I have been seeing everywhere online so of course I wanted a copy when Pan Macmillan offered me one. I mean not only is this cover beautiful but the premise sounds beautiful. It's set in 14th century China and it's about a brother and sister who have been given very different destinies. One is prophesied for greatness, one is prophesied for nothingness and it's the little boy who's destined for greatness but also the little boy who dies and therefore his sister takes on his identity and tries to follow in his path or destiny instead so cannot wait to read this one. We then have some books that I bought myself. First up I've had great success recently with secondhand books so I'll start there and yes you did see right there are a bunch of hardbacks in that pile honestly cannot believe I found these. So I found all three of these in the one charity shop specifically uh, I think it's Shelter up next to Edinburgh University University for £2 each, so £6 for what look like brand new hardbacks and books I wanted to read. So The First Sister is a science fiction novel that I'd been considering buying new and was just astounded to find in a charity shop. And this one is written by Lyndon A. Lewis. It's about two protagonists, one who's an unnamed priestess of the sisterhood, a sort of intergalactic order, and the other who is Captain Wren. And I believe that the unnamed sister in this novel is sent to investigate the captain who apparently has a secret. I'm not sure if this one may potentially have LGBTQ plus themes, please tell me if I'm right or wrong. I thought I maybe saw that but I'm not 100% sure. Regardless however, I've seen great reviews, I've had a few people recommend this to me and I cannot wait to read it. We then have two books 
by Mercedes Lackey. So these are two of Mercedes Lackey's fairy tale retellings. Mercedes Lackey is a pretty well respected and well known fantasy author and I just did not expect to find these in a charity shop in the UK in particular because I think they're US editions. So we have Beauty and the Werewolf which is obviously a retelling of uh, Little Red Riding Hood and The Sleeping Beauty which is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. If you're wondering they're covered in cellophane because they're ex-library copies but I am super excited to read both of them. Let me know if you've read either and which one I should start with. Then dotted around other Edinburgh charity shops I managed to pick up a few more books. The first one is All Out edited by Sandra Mitchell. So this is an anthology collection of short stories by YA writers all of which deal with LGBTQ plus characters. This is what I do remember seeing online and being interested in picking up but never got around to so of course when I saw it for a pound or a charity shop I couldn't resist. We have authors in here like Anna Marie McLemore, Mackenzie Lee, Melinda Lowe, Sean David Hutchison, Tessa Grattan. These all I believe have fantastical themes as well and I mean look at how beautiful that cover is. Then on the paperback front we have The Killing Moon which is book one of the, the Dream Blood series by uh, N.K. Jemisin. So I don't know much about this but I know that N.K. Jemisin is a beloved fantasy and science fiction author who I'm certain I'm going to love. I just haven't gotten around to reading yet so of course I had to pick this up since it was the first in the series. I find quite often in charity shops when I do see books in series they're never the first ones so it's like a sign when you see the first in a series you were interested in. It's set in an ancient city-state where peace is the only law. Upon its rooftops and among the shadows of its cobbled streets wait the gatherers, the keepers of this peace. Priests of the dream goddess, their duty is to harvest the magic of the sleeping mind and use it to heal, soothe and kill those judged corrupt. <gasps> that sounds so good. I, I, I really like that premise. This isn't one I've actually seen a lot of reviews for online so let me know if you've read it. We then have The Poison Diaries by Mary Rose Wood which is another first in a series, this time a YA fantasy series and I picked this one up because it's by one of my all time favourite middle grade writers. So you may have heard me talk in the past about Mary Rose Wood's Incorrigible Children of Ash in Play series. I am a die-hard fan of that series, it's absolutely brilliant, but she also has this YA series which I really don't know what to expect for because obviously it's a very different age demographic, but given how much I like her writing in her middle grade I definitely wanted to give this a try and just see if she's just all round brilliant in all genres and age ranges. And then last but not least, uh, and then last but not least for the charity shops is Fair Exchange by Michelle Roberts. Now I specifically picked this up because I was with my mum and she picked this one off the shelves saying that she'd read Michelle Michelle Roberts in the past, not this book specifically, really enjoyed her and thought I particularly would enjoy her so I thought hey it's always nice to have a recommendation from your mum, why not grab it, it was only 50p. And it is based on the story of Mary Wollstonecraft and William Wordsworth. So aside from that I really don't know much but I'm definitely excited to give it a try. Then lastly we do have some books that I bought new. So first up is one that I've been super excited to get my hands on and that is Norse Myths. Meet the gods, monsters and heroes of the Vikings, written by Matt Ralphs and illustrated by Katie Ponder. So this is actually the second book in DK's series exploring myths and legends from various different cultures around the world. The first of which was all about Greek myths and I wrote. <laughs> well this is basically that book but all about Norse myths and I am so excited to get stuck in. I have absolute faith that this is going to be fantastic and I also know it's going to have beautiful illustrations because Katie Ponder is just incredible. So yeah, if you enjoy Greek myths you might want to check out this one as well. They also look beautiful together on the shelf. We then have three books, all of which I bought from a specialist online bookshop called Shroud Books. So this is a bookshop I actually discovered through TikTok. I follow um, their account and I follow uh, their owner on TikTok and I finally got around to ordering from them. Everything they sell on their website is horror and I love me some horror. It also has horror from a vast array of subgenres. There's a specific LGBTQ plus section on their website as well as a section on classics and myths and folklore etc etc. Whatever you're looking for, if it's vaguely scary, it's going to be on there. I would highly recommend checking them out and these are the books that that I purchased. So first up is Frankenstein an illustrated edition. So I don't know what happened to my edition of Frankenstein if it was something to do with my move from London or Edinburgh but it's disappeared. It's vanished into the ether and I really like Frankenstein so it's a book I would like to own and I'd always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to replace it. So when I saw this on their website which is an illustrated edition I thought this is the time Jean. This is the time. It's illustrated by Bernie Wrightson and the illustrations are incredible. Let me see if I can actually open a page to one of them to show you. So for example, um, this is from the opening 
of the novel here and then we have like later scenes here they're stunning they match so well with the atmosphere of the book and I'm so excited to reread this one eventually with the illustrations then we have two books I didn't actually know anything about but found on their website and thought sounded so fascinating. So first up is Such Pretty Things by Lisa Heathfield. This one follows Clara and Stephen who following their mother's accident are sent to stay with their aunt and uncle. It's a summer to explore the remote house, the walled garden and woods. Beyond it all the lock sits silent and waiting. Auntie has wanted children for so long with hair to brush and arms to slip into clothes made just for them. All those hours washing, polishing, preparing beds and preserving fruit and now Clara and Stephen are here like a miracle on her doorstep. This sounds insidious already. But as they explore their new home, the children uncover ghosts Auntie buried long ago. As their worlds collide, Clara and Auntie struggle for control. I'm not going to say any more, but that sounds fascinating. Then we have You Let Me In by Camilla Bruce. So everyone knew best-selling novelist Cassandra Tip had twice got away with murder. They did? I've already forgotten the premise of this one, clearly, because that's brilliant. Even her family were convinced of her guilt. So when she disappears, leaving only a long letter behind, they suspect that her conscience finally killed her. Oh my goodness. I might read this next. I might just put this next to my bed because I think I want to read it now. Then lastly, it's my book. And it's the final copy of my book. I bought myself an author copy, so it is slightly discounted, of my own book. And it's, it's done. Like... It's the final edition, the ISBN number is on there, the spine is the right way round because I didn't get that right the first time around for the proofs and I cannot believe I'm holding it in my hands, like it is so cool. Um, let me see if I can show you some of the inside because I feel like some of the details are just so lovely. Um, I don't want to like spoil any of it but look, the little chapter headings like this have little images at the top, it just, it's so beautiful to see it all fully laid out like an actual book. It feels so real and it is real because the book is out in two weeks. So yeah, if you do order a physical copy, this is what you're going to get. It's 316 pages long and I'm so excited to share it with you. If you are interested, there's only one place you can pre-order physical copies, which is Barnes & Noble. So you have to be in the US to pre-order physical copy from them. You can, however, pre-order the Kindle edition, the Kobo edition and the Nook edition. So I'm most of of the uh, e-reader formats covered there and physical copies will be available on release day. So release day is the 2nd of September, like I said, super soon now. I'm incredibly nervous but excited. <laughs> and physical copies will be available on Lulu, Amazon, uh, Barnes & Nobles like it already is and hopefully some other sites too but I will share an updated list regularly on Twitter and Instagram of where you can buy it. You can also use the ISBN number to search for it online and even potentially order it in to local bookshops. You can also, if you're a library user and your library uses Overdrive which is a ebook and audiobook platform that libraries use, request the your library ordering the ebook. I don't know about physical books at the moment but you can definitely recommend your library pre-order or order it on Overdrive so that's another option if you're a library user. So yes that's the update on my book and those are all of the books by other people that have come into my house recently. As always, I'd really love to hear from you if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them or if you've been meaning to read them as well because I'm just excited about them and want to chat more. So yeah, that is everything for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye everyone.